In this MapSuite MVC Edition sample app walkthrough, we're going to show you how you can implement a very simple vehicle tracking application. Of all the various How Do I samples, this one um, is probably one of the more complex ones as it's uh, retrieving data from an uh, external source, updating the map in real time, and also allowing you to uh, hover over various um, items on the map and showing a pop up. Um, if you haven't seen this sample before, you can go ahead and hit the Track Vehicles button. And you'll notice that the vehicles will start moving their positions. Um, every second they'll get updated uh, as the uh, program will read the new positions from, uh, from a resource. And then uh, you can stop the tracking as well. And then hovering over it will do a pop-up showing the uh, vehicle's ID number. So if you're interested in how uh, you would set up an application like this, let's uh, dig into the code and uh, see what's, what's going on behind the scenes. To get started, let's uh, dig into the view source. And as you can see in the view source, we've got lots of JavaScript because we wanted this application to be very responsive and do as much as we can client side um, and not do a lot of postbacks every time the, uh, the vehicles update. And then down here we've got uh, our two buttons um, where we're calling some JavaScript functions that we'll dig into a little bit later. And in this section here is where we're setting up the map uh, when the application is first loaded. So as uh, most of our samples have, we've got our standard code here where we set up the map, um, you know, set the extent, the map tools, etc. And then down here we've got uh, where we're adding uh, the world map kit overlay. And then we've got, we're using a simple marker overlay that will contain all of the uh, icons of our vehicles. So if you need to, you know, use your own uh, icons or imagery, this is a great place to look of how you would implement that with uh, some markers and various uh, different images. So once that all set up, the, uh, the map is rendered. And when that happens, you get just the map like this with the vehicles. Um, just sitting there and not moving. Uh, once you click the track vehicles button, some JavaScript is fired on the again on the uh, client side. And if we take a look at uh, that, you can see when the track vehicle is uh, initiated, there is a timer set um, by using the window dot set interval. And then as uh, when that timer fires, we'll calling a uh, map AJAX callback action telling the controller we want and what the, uh, the method is we want to call with inside that controller. And then finally we want to pass back, uh, you know, we want to give a callback reference to the method we want to execute once the callback is done. And then this sets the timer to execute every second. Um, so let's go back, let's go to the server side now and take a look at this get current position so you can see what's going on the server side to actually retrieve the position for all the different vehicles. To do that we'll go into the controller source and we'll scroll down here to the get current position routine and uh, we check to see if uh, the vehicles are null and if so we go ahead and read vehicles and the read vehicles is down here And for this uh, example, we're just going against a, uh, a simple access database that has a table with various uh, points um, of where the vehicles have all been. So if you're familiar with uh, accessing databases and retrieving information, that's pretty much what uh, these two uh, routines here are doing. Once we have, a, and we're returning a dictionary um, object that contains all the latest position along with for each vehicle. Once we have that uh, um, dictionary object, we want to go ahead and create a, uh, um, a JSON vehicles class. And it's just a simple, uh, it, I don't have the code here, but in your, in the how do I samples, there's a little simple vehicles class that just uh, defines, you know, the longitude, latitude, and the uh, vehicle ID. So within that, uh, we're going to loop through this uh, um, collection of uh, vehicles with the, the most recent position and add that to the JSON vehicles uh, collection class. Then finally down here, we're going to call it serialize and we're going to actually serialize this class to JSON. 
And if you're not familiar with JSON, it's a, it's a lightweight uh, um, format that you can easily transfer data back and forth uh, between the client and server so you can parse it and, and work with it in a much easier manner. Now that we've got it serialized, this uh, serialized JSON is going to get returned back to the client. So let's go back there and take a look at the client code. That would come in here to the um, success function. As you can see, we're getting uh, the JSON out. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, deserialize the JSON into a vehicles um, uh, variable. And that will allow us easier to work with the vehicles variable. And then within the marker layer that contains all of our vehicle uh, markers, we're going to uh, clear all of that and then re-add them with, their, um, with the most recent positions. So all of this code right here is uh, showing how you would add the uh, add the markers to the map client side, you know, add the pop up so if you hover over it, it, it displays that information. So really, it's you're you're not limited to just passing back you know very simple information. You could pass back a lot in the JSON object and add a lot more rich information to your pop ups and things of that nature. So that shows uh, how the actual. Um, um, retrieval of the current position occurs and how the uh, the map is updated on the client side. Now let's take a look at uh, uh, a few other things such as the stop tracking button. So if you want to stop uh, retrieving current positions all this does is clear the timer so the timer doesn't fire and this uh, track vehicle um, or this Ajax callback does not happen anymore. So that's a real easy way to stop and start uh, retrieving the information from the uh, access database. And then the next little bit of uh, um, function is just showing how to add the, the actual pop-up to the marker. And that's just called back here from the uh, success result uh, to make the, uh, the routine a little easier to read. So with that, you can see how you can easily build a vehicle tracking uh, application. Um, of course, it'll need to be modified to go against your data sources, and uh, you'll probably want to change your icons and add your own custom information to the pop-ups. But it's a great place to start if you're looking at um, how to use MapSuite and some of the basic concepts of updating markers and uh, uh, timers and, and retrieving information from, from external resources. I hope this uh, walkthrough has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us, or you can post them directly to our discussion forums at thinkgeo.com forums. Thank you for watching.